So they're like, so the right one, hmm. so the right hand is like, listen, I'm stronger, so I'll be able to lock you off. So then you have to go seek out other right hands to come back and get me because you're a left-handed pussy and you're not going to be able to get rid of <laughs> <laughs> you're not even able to get this off so in the middle of the night the right hand chops off the left hand which like then scurries off to go seek more hands and then they start this like hand revolution where people are just chopping their hands off right <laughs> and they're all trying to come back for their leader which is the guy who still has his right hand and he as he has all these hands scurrying up behind him realizes the only way mm. like legion with the swine is to <laughs> jump off <laughs> to jump off the building so all the hands follow him down oh wow like a lemming <laughs> there was another clive barker one it was like a, it was a short book it was only a couple hundred pages but like i'm not always the fastest reader because i i get distracted or like if, if something is quite profound i'll have to read it like three or four times and then like get into the midst of an existential crisis while i exactly think about it. exactly so, <laughs> so um there's a book that he wrote i think it's called the thief of always and it's this 10 year old kid who runs away from home and then he ends up in this other backyard and every day he goes it's all four seasons so for like six hours in the morning it's summer and then for six hours it's winter and then spring and the fall like he just so he's like this is fucking amazing like i'm lying out in the sun in the morning and then in the afternoon i'm building snowmen so after a month, he decides like he misses his family and he wants to go so he finds a way to escape and when he gets home he's been there for a month but because of the way that the time has been working every day that he's been there has been a year so when he gets yeah. home 10 year old him shows up but his like parents are 30 years older and they're like what the fuck but the book <laughs> so like it's a couple hundred pages so it should mm. theoretically under normal circumstances would have taken me a few hours to get through with distractions i think yeah. i got through it in like two hours and then because mm. of the pace in which i read it and the story, I was like, what fucking day is it? Like, like, <laughs> like it's stuck in that backyard and now it's yeah. like six months later and I've just finished this book. Each page took you a day to read. <laughs> that, yes. That's so 200 cool. days later. That's so, like, cool. <laughs> so there's my Clive Barker story for you. <laughs> Someone's in a good mood today. How'd your doctor's appointment go? I'm um, getting an x-ray later this afternoon. Oh, good. It was, but it was funny. I was going to do this outside because mm. it's a beautiful day. It is. I, but then I was on the phone with my doctor outside and she was like, I just need to take a second because all I can hear are your birds and it sounds really nice. So she was like, <laughs> we were quiet for like 10 seconds while she was like, oh, that sounds so nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's a nice doctor. A lovely day. But yeah, I'm getting an x-ray. Okay. I don't want to say I told you so, but wouldn't it be really funny if I was actually right and you did break your toe? <laughs> but even if I did break it, there's nothing you can do for a broken toe. No, it was just that if, um, because of how bad your foot, your toe sounded, um, there's all sorts of things that can go wrong that you might need to rectify. Because obviously well, I hadn't seen your toe, so I didn't know how bad it was. It, looking at it, it, so when Gozer sprained it, it was yeah. much, it looked much worse than it looked now. Yeah. Like the there was not really a deep bruise it was kind of a bruise it was swollen for a couple of days and then if i like walk around a lot it gets a little swollen but it didn't look it's not like it's if it was like denzel washington's pinky finger that went up <laughs> <laughs> then i would be more concerned but it was like yeah. a normal looking toe yeah 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 it just hurts yeah i just wanted to put the fear of god into you that was all <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, if I'm going to lose one, I wish I would lose the other pinky toe. I have two different pinky toes. Okay. Like one looks like it was transplanted off my mom's foot and one mm. looks like it came off my dad's foot and he had terrible feet. And so, <laughs> yeah, if is I this, was going to lose one, I would have liked to have lost that one. Is this where your hatred of toes and feet comes from? Is the Probably. fact that your feet don't match? Probably. And I think my computer heard me say that to you because mm. every time I'm, I'm online now, all I see <laughs> in the corner is like a is an ad for like toe fungus cream oh gross <laughs> oh that is million like there's they, they do a lot of commercials i don't know if you have these in the uk they do a lot of commercials for like toe fungus creams and stuff and so there's always like little kids playing around their dad's feet like dad that's gross and yeah. then they show the foot but there was one it fills me with such rage every time so this kid is trying to do homework on the coffee table mm -hmm. and her dad's feet are like right on her face and she's like dad what's wrong with your toes and it's like why are you putting your feet in your child's face? She's trying to do her homework. Get yeah. your gnarly feet off the fucking table. That's disgusting. It makes me so mad. Yeah, he doesn't care about her education. And she probably doesn't need her education because she's a woman anyway, so. 
that's fair. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I mean, that's what that's what the advert's trying to say, not me. Is there like because I know why my birthday is the end of September? That's because it's nine months after New Year's. So nine months after my mom's birthday. Well, there we go. <laughs> I don't think it was a gift for her though. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was the gift. The yeah, event yeah. leading up to it was was probably not. My <laughs> sister. So my parents were born were married by proxy. <laughs> so, like my mom's wedding photo is her standing in a wedding dress, holding a picture of my dad and the phone because that, that's how they did it. So my dad came to Canada first because he had a brother here. So his brother sponsored him to come to Canada, and he got a job. He got a they uh, rented a house together. <laughs> so he got everything kind of set up. And then this is the way they tell it. And then nine months after my dad came here, they got married. Nine months after they got married, my mom was able to come to Canada. And then nine months after my mom got here, my sister was born. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the telling of that story. I'm nine months after my mom's birthday. My brother is in July. So I don't know what would have, what's nine months before July, October? Birthday. My birthday, we're celebrating my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, you can't because he's older than you, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Forty Four on One. I'm Tempest. This is G Vizzle. <laughs> so, of course, you should all like and subscribe just based on that alone. <laughs> Gozer thinks so too. Yeah, Gozer thinks it's a really good idea. So, we're just going to throw random questions at each other today, and uh, G Vizzle can go first. I have a list. I'm picking at random. I have not seen these. <laughs> if I need, okay. Oh, that's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best type of cheese? <laughs> that's you a big just question. Throw that at a man. <laughs> I know. Coming out swinging. Best, best one. Best <gasps> cheese. But there is Apologies a... to all of our lactose intolerance friends. Sorry. Ableist. Mm. Although I did learn mm. there are many, many types of cheese that are mistakenly thought to be high in lactose, but they're actually not like old cheddar and those like drier mm. types of cheese are a bit oh. lower in lactose. So they can be tolerated by someone who is lactose intolerant. Although if they cannot be tolerated by the lactose intolerant, then it may be a different mm. thing that you are intolerant to. Start to the C, I can't remember. Celiac disease. Who with where? No. Not that it's a disease. It's another compound in cheese that's oh. not lactose, but mm. could be what's causing the intolerance, not mm. lactose. I don't remember what it is. Start, I know it starts with a C. It's cheese-related, not gluten-related. <laughs> so there is hope for our lactose intolerance friends. Sir, what is your favorite type of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> Deep breaths. <laughs> the, I get very excited when I think that the useless pieces of information in my head actually serve a purpose. I get super psyched about it. Now I can yeah. forget about that and never have to worry about it again. It's almost like you're trying to say it before you forget it. Pro yeah. I can feel it going. I, I have up, to get the words. I grew up in a very verbose family, so you needed ah. to get shit out quick before mm. somebody else cut you off. Yeah, th that's why I can sometimes, well, quite often I talk quite loud and I laugh quite loudly. It's just I was in quite a loud household. And, uh, and my stepdad had this big, booming Welsh voice. So, yeah. Quit stalling. Jeez. <laughs> so uh, those facts that you got, were they from uh, that Kick-Ass Facts website? Cheese. <laughs> You're not my boss. You can't tell me what to do. Um, sure can. <laughs> um, I do believe that the... Oh, it's not the best, but it's the most versatile would be cheddar. Because there's a lot you can do with it. It doesn't matter what mood you're in. And cheddar the question is always was not, there for you. What is, the question was not what was the most versatile cheese. It's what is the best. It is unanswerable. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. I would sooner rather be able to pick my favorite dog than my favorite cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because one of my favorite cheeses... Not necessarily the best, but my favourite one is one that they uh, leave to mature in an old disused slate mine in North uh, North Wales. And then they it gets packaged in this sort of bluish grey wax. And then you can buy it, I think, in Sainsbury's over here. So. Doesn't that sound fancy? Yeah, yeah. And it's, 
<laughs> it sounds fancy, but what they're basically doing is they're maturing cheese in a hole in the ground just because the temperature in the in the caverns in the mine exactly match the refrigeration temperature and it's constant. And then if you call it cave aged cheese, you can charge more for it. Yes. <laughs> I'm quite partial to smoked gouda. Oh, I haven't had that for a while. And making no. smoked gouda with uh in a macaroni like a homemade macaroni and cheese is oh. A delight. Oh, that sounds so good. I love mac and cheese, but like with proper cheese in it. Yes. Yeah. It's got to be from scratch macaroni and cheese. I do like like a mix of smoked gouda, cheddar, parmesan, throw it in there. Oh, nice. And some cream cheese to mellow it out and creamy it up. Or if not cream cheese, yet yeah, like boursin. Right? Yes. Yeah. That I in there that. because it's got herbs mm. and stuff. It's delicious. Really hungry cheese. now. I fucking love cheese. I'm gonna have to go to the shop after this and actually get some cheese. There's a cheese shop in my town, and it's like it's a fancy like they have a chandelier. It's a fancy cheese shop, and they do oh, a lot. Wow. But pre-COVID, they did a lot of samples, and it was mm. just like the best. Like, place that's how ever. I'd spend a day. Yeah, it was like, what are you doing today? I'm gonna get dressed up and go to the cheese shop. <laughs> <laughs> Is cheese one of your favorite things to eat then? Um. Yes. And like you said, the versatility of it, because it's mm. not like there are some things that are just, they're just what they are, right? Like, a, mm. yes, an egg can take on many forms, but it's just an egg. But like cheese, like that, you can pretty much add cheese to almost anything. Yeah. Yeah. Have you um, ever had Welsh rarebit, but like a proper Welsh rarebit? I have not. And I like to get, um, yeah, just uh, some nice ham and then cheese and Worcester sauce. Oh, it's just so fucking good. Sometimes I fry some onions and put that in. It's good. But then the good thing about Welsh rabbit is it's not really one thing. What it essentially is is cheese on toast. But you can do whatever you want to it, and then it's still Welsh rabbit. So it's, it's a versatile dish with the most versatile food on the planet, the humble cheese. It's like macaroni and cheese. Like You can pretty much add anything into macaroni yeah. and cheese. Because that's just the base, but then there's like tons of different add-ins to it. Uh, my heart did sink once, though, when I was in uh, Canadian land. Um, and it nearly ruined mac and cheese forever. Why? Because uh, we don't have craft over here, okay? And my mate, um, she was saying about how, uh, like, she'd been saying when she was a student, she used to live off this craft cheese. And then in other conversations, she was talking about how much she loved mac and cheese. And then I thought it was going to be proper mac and cheese you fucking make yourself and you put good cheese in it. No. The first thing that she made me for dinner out there, she goes, oh, God, I have to show you how good this craft is. Yeah. It's craft macaroni and cheese. It has a, a special nostalgic place in my heart, but mm. making actual macaroni and cheese is not that much more work. <laughs> like, it's a very yeah. simple thing to make. And... And for someone that's been literally awake for 48 hours because they had to travel over and then go to a museum. Oh, no, party. you needed some good, like, stick to your ribs, gooey, cheesy yeah. mac and cheese. And then do what she wanted to do. <clears throat> she wanted to put hot tuna in it and mix it all up. I no. Fucking, I hate hot tuna. No, I tried a tuna casserole recipe oh. once. And because uh, I'd had, like, uh, what are they? A tuna melt. Yeah. And a tuna melt. I was quite tasty, right? It was just like toast, tuna, cheese, pop it in the oven, or yeah. tuna melt. I thought, okay, so hot tuna is probably not that terrible. And then I made this tuna casserole, and I was like, I couldn't even eat it. I I felt yeah. so terrible throwing it out. It was just inedible. And I, mm. I've gone through, like, every cookbook I owned up until that point, and every one at some point had a tuna casserole recipe, and I was just like, rip! I'm not yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna fool me twice. I just no, I don't care for it. Uh, if like we're at a, at a restaurant or whatever, and we feel like having nachos, like that's the question that we ask: is like, yeah. is it proper shredded cheese that it gets melted, or is it cheese sauce? Because that is a whole other texture and flavor. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> oh, so many minutes spent on cheese. Oh, I fucking love cheese though; it's the best. I'm gonna have some after this. I really am. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I feel like I need some just to pick on now, you know, just nibble while we're talking. You need a little charcuterie board. I do, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard of the company Cacuterie? No. They make charcuterie boards in the shape of giant uh, penis and balls. So they call them a cacuterie board. That is amazing. 
I got how do I spell that? As you would expect, cock ootery. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most ridiculous fact you know? Oh shit. Oh, I've already covered the Sarlacc pit for ants. <laughs> womp, womp. Oh no. <laughs> um, if you got one, because you've been looking up loads of facts recently. I have been looking up a lot of facts, and the one I told you before we started recording, I think is quite fascinating that there was a doctor in the a French biologist surgeon who was transplanting monkey testicles onto millionaires or um, the testicles from executed convicts onto millionaires in an attempt to rejuvenate their man parts. And he was known as monkey gland man. (laughs) I would not be surprised if he was the um, uh, inspiration for that film reanimator. I haven't seen that I, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen it either. Talking. Yeah. <laughs> or the human yeah, centipede. So, of what's rattling around in the top of my noodle, that's the one that comes to mind. <laughs> oh, I, I know that he is a ridiculous fact that um, if you get a bunch of people in, in a room and you get them to look at lines on a screen and to tell you which one is longer, the majority of people will agree with the rest of the group, even if they're obviously blatantly wrong. They've done so many tests like that, and it's so sad to see how many people are just so quick to put their yeah. own observations aside to go yeah. with the majority or conform. Like they did one, I think, where they had a, a woman sitting in a room, or not just a woman, they had like a bunch of people, but they did it one person at a time. They would sit in a room, like a waiting room with a bunch of other people. I think they were under the impression that they were going in for an interview. And then during the interview, they started to release smoke under the door. And like the smell of smoke so that you would think there there was a fire happening. So all the people who were in the room were paid actors except for the one. And they just sat and continued doing their questionnaire and they'd look over and see it, but not react. And so the person that was being studied would at first be like, and then when they saw nobody else reacting, they were like, oh, "Um, it must be all right then. (laughs) Yeah. Instead of being like, fucking fire. Like, (laughs) (laughs) or hey, is that normal? That they were just like, oh yeah, I guess that actually leads me to, this, this is my my facts now. The <laughs> bystander effect. Have you heard of yeah. that? Yes. But I'm a psychologist, of course I have. <laughs> but you tell it, though. It's more interesting when you tell it. That, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, if there is, hang on, I got checks notes. I had it written down because I wanted to remember it. Uh, also called bystander apathy. Yeah. It's a Uh, a social psychological phenomenon that refers to cases in which individuals do not offer any means of help to a victim when other people are present. The probability of help is inversely related to the number of bystanders. The greater number of bystanders, the less likely it is that anyone's going to help them. Yeah. That's shocking. That not one uh, person would be like, should we maybe do something? uh, There's two things that, that you and anybody else listening to this should add to look up as well for more facts is you want to look up obedience to authority and diffusion of responsibility. Um, Because those two things are related to the bystander apathy. Interesting. What are some nicknames you have for some of your coworkers? Oh, don't. Same. Terrible question. Um... (laughs) We answered it the same once again, though, which is quite funny. Are you looking for fun new glasses that won't break the bank? Go to zlul.com. They have daily flash sales. You can find frames as low as $2. Prescription, non-prescription, sunglasses, they have it all. Use my promo code to save. If animals could talk, which would be the rudest? Oh, I was thinking about my own pets then. I was thinking which one of the pets would be rude. (laughs) I think Hester would be the rudest out of my pets. And I think in terms of actual animals, I think um, some of the species of monkeys um some of the apes why just because um they're quite playful they like um chasing people nicking their food they fight each other fuck each other everything and i just think that they love playing their games and their shenanigans so much that like if they could fully vocalize things the way that we do they'd be certainly quite uh, offensive and naughty i think <laughs> what do you reckon uh, Canadian geese. <laughs> Why them? They're cunts. They're cunts. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're Canadian geese. But <laughs> they are 
Uh, so a friend of mine once sent me a picture. She was walking to her car after work and there was a goose standing beside her driver's side door and she was like, I guess I live here now. Like you don't <laughs> <laughs> you still fuck with it. <laughs> no, they shit everywhere. They don't care about you. They will fight you and they will probably win because they're vicious little bastards. I they're rude as animals. If they could speak, <laughs> they would be even more unbearable. That's a good point. I hadn't considered this because our version of this is going to be the seagull, the humble seagull. And I, I've seen them do shit to people, like literally yeah. shit on them, nicky things. Also, um, I was in this place called St. Ives. It's a really nice harbour there in Cornwall. And this woman was just walking along arm in arm with her boyfriend, having a lovely day, licking her ice cream. And she looked so happy. <laughs> and the seagull just went and just took the... I've seen seagulls do that too. I think birds in general would be really rude. Yeah. The whole what, species yeah. would be rude. <laughs> I think that's why um, uh, the film Birds in general is probably quite terrifying as a concept because they outnumber us. Um, they don't have fear in that in the same way that we do. And they can swoop and then leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is cereal soup. We are going to have to look up the definition for soup. So... Yeah, because I would probably say that cereal isn't soup because cereal is something usually, like, traditionally eaten at breakfast and it's cold um, and because of what you mix it with, milk or orange juice. And then soup is, I don't know the technical terms. Did you just say orange juice? Yeah, some people put orange juice in their cornflakes. Some people pour their milk first and then the cereal into it. What? So yeah, that's a thing. Sociopath. Okay, so the technical definition, uh, Google just answered this question. The definition yeah. of soup is a liquid dish typically made by boiling meat, fish, or vegetables in stock or water. Yeah. Cereal's not soup. Definitive. You get your answers to the real questions here on 44 and 1. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz. <laughs> by that token, yeah. sir, yeah. is a hot dog a sandwich? Oh. This leads to a big, big conversation. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Is a burger yeah. a sandwich? Is a taco a sandwich? What about a quesadilla? Lots of debate. Heated, mm. strong debate about the definition <laughs> of sandwich. Let's look up what Uncle Google says. A sandwich is an item of food consisting of two pieces of bread with meat, cheese, or other fillings between them. It's so a hot dog. Hot dog, though, it's not between the bun, though. It's kind of resting quasi on top and in the bun at the same time as some kind of Schrodinger sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Schrodinger sandwich. Did you? Okay. <laughs> did I what? Uh, did you see the, the thing I sent you with Steve Colbert, the 15 questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you watch the Jeff Goldblum one? No, no, not yet. So he asked Jeff Goldblum, what's the best type of sandwich? starts telling the story he had to do his in two parts because it's jeff goldblum so jeff goldblum starts telling the story about how he was somewhere at this event and he was sitting between one stunningly beautiful woman whose name i can't remember and sophia <laughs> loren so steve colbert was like that's a nice neighborhood and then jeff goldblum was like yes one could say i was sandwiched between them <laughs> <laughs> and i fell a little bit more in love with him at that moment than I am. <laughs> Yeah, so I like back how to shredding your sandwich. Yeah. Two pieces of bread with meat or cheese. Although mm. I think that's unfair because if, maybe not, if you were to have one slice of bread and you put peanut butter on half of it and fold it over, mm. is that a sandwich? Yeah, because it's not two pieces of bread, is it? It's still one piece of bread. But is it a sandwich? And then if by that, is an open face sandwich a sandwich? Because it's only one piece of bread with stuff on top of it instead of inside of it. And then people call it an open face sandwich. I, I think these, I tell you what, I will posit, I shall put forth that these are subtypes of sandwich. So you've got sandwiches, and then so you've got your typical generic sandwich, and then you've got an open face sandwich, and you've got a hot dog or a burger and all those a panini. Things. Yeah. A, a quesadilla. Um, like a hierarchy of sandwiches. Yeah. I'm down with that. Yeah. Which mythical creature would improve the world if it existed? Probably the Greek Titans, because they'd fucking wipe us all out, and then um, the planet could start again. 
<laughs> that was dark. I don't know. Actually, what do, what do you reckon? What would your answer be? I had a bit of a crush on Tumnus from uh, Chronicles of Narnia, so. <laughs> oh, Mr. Tumnus! I mean, maybe it was the James McAvoy in the Tumnus suit. Uh, I think. <laughs> Centaurs would be cool. Cent I mean, mythical creatures. So, I mean, does it have like, would a, a Dementor probably wouldn't be a bad idea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, um, they're called Karens now. <laughs> fairies would be nice, or imps. No, not traditional fairies, though. Traditional, like, Old ye oldy folklore fairies, they're evil. Nothing nice about them. Yeah, they sort some shit out. Unlike your your Greek Titans can fuck us all up, but a fairy can't. Well, I was joking about them. You're clearly not joking about the fairies. <laughs> I I have a friend who's got a schizotypal personality disorder, and uh, she thinks that fairies are real. So, and she thinks she has evidence for it as well. Well, a lot of people have evidence for like Bigfoot and yeah. Loch Ness. So, what mythical creature <laughs> <laughs> would improve the world most if it existed? Oh, man. Because I, I think all the ones that you listed, apart from maybe Centaurs and Mr. Tumnus, um, all sound awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't see how they would really improve. No. Nah. The world. I mean, nah. they would probably make it more interesting, but I can't see any of them. Like, I, maybe I don't know my mythology well enough to think that there would be a, <laughs> a creature that could come and, like, sort out poverty or climate change. <laughs> like, well, that's the thing. I, I think that because all of these things, they, they, they usually come with a really harsh lesson of some kind. You know, the kind of things they don't allow in children's programming these days. <laughs> and it's never all nice and wishy-washy. So I, no, I don't think true. there is any. And if they existed, it would probably be bad for them rather than us. Probably. As soon as something is different, it is mm. going to get dissected. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was trying to pick and choose, but I don't want to pick and choose. I just want to pick a random. <laughs> what would be the coolest animal to scale up to the size of a horse? A stag beetle would be pretty cool because they can lift like a hundred times their own body mass. If you can imagine that, a stag beetle as the size of a horse, that'd be just, if there's a way of taming it, they'd be a brilliant pack animal or well, like, like a herd animal, not herd animal. I've got the word. What if you couldn't tame it? Then we're fucked and I then we have just, like 700 pound stag beetles. Yeah, and I've ruined the whole of life for everyone forever and it's the new apocalypse. We need the Greek Titans to come in and strip yeah. that shit out. Exactly. I probably shouldn't have um uh increased their size all at once. I probably should have just done one at a time, but I'm a scientist. Just see how it goes, see how yeah. it plays out. Yeah. I can't think of one that wouldn't have dire consequences. <laughs> Like I would, I would love to be able to say dogs, but then if I had a seven hundred pound gozer, I would be dead. I... <laughs> You're like your niece's head would be as flat as the pillow now. <laughs> yeah, and we uh, it would just it would just be chaos. Imagine a dog park with seven hundred pound dogs running around. You need no. a coliseum. Yeah, it would be terrible. Like yeah, nothing. I don't think anything. If it scaled up, because what if we could scale down? Like, what if you just took, like, a, like an elephant and made it the size of a horse? That'd be really cute. That'd be adorable. Be a little buddy. Yeah. Or, like, killer whales the size of... I mean, they'd probably get eaten pretty quickly, but... they. I but mean, you keep it in a tank, in you know, in a swimming pool. That's cool. Them. Yeah, that is true. That's cool. No. SeaWorld is the biggest travesty, I think, in terms of animal entertainment. I agree. So maybe we need to take seals... Mm. And make them the size of horses so they mm. can fight back and have a chance. Yeah, because fuck those people that run that place. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> <laughs> what movie would be greatly improved if it was made into a musical? I don't, could, could you imagine any of those films, like Alien or 
a dune or I don't know. Human centipede. I don't know about films that would be made better, but they'd certainly be a source of entertainment if you're like, yeah, I mean, like, can you imagine Alien the musical or something? Stay away from her, you bitch! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> jazz hands, jazz hands. <laughs> this is it. It's game over, man. Game over. <laughs> Have you ever been mistaken for a man? Have you? Have you? Have you? <laughs> And they can all run around with their cocoonery boards. <laughs> I love this version of Aliens. Oh, brilliant. Okay, then what musical would be made better by making it not a musical? Do you know, actually, uh, taking that in reverse, uh, a film that would be rubbish and the most boring thing in the world if it was made at, not into a musical would be The Producers. <laughs> <laughs> this is the whole that? point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be the most boring film ever if it wasn't a musical. I think if like The Wizard of Oz wasn't a musical, it would be a much darker movie. Oh yeah. Totally. Like it lightens it up a little bit. Same with like the mm. original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, um, he was really annoyed by that, um, the the first one, because he said it it um it wasn't what he imagined. Like his film was effectively a child's horror story. And then it got turned into this um, stupid, happy, crappy film. Not stupid. That movie was amazing. But there is the, like, <laughs> scary part where they're going through, like, the boat. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, all of a sudden it takes a turn where you're like, what's up with Willie? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I really like the the, um, the new one with uh, Johnny Depp. and Mumbler. Yeah. It, it, that was exactly, like, it was such a sinister film. And he was so clearly weird. He was yeah. channeling Michael Jackson vibes. And, he yeah. did a fantastic job. Fantastic. He really did. And, I wonder and the Oompa we'll... Loompas, the, yeah. like, the updated music and all that stuff, and they were like truer to the book and what they look like yeah. and how... Yeah, love that. And I, I wonder, actually, if we'll get lots of uh, likes and subscribes and um, views because we mentioned Johnny Depp. And there everyone likes oh, him maybe. again now. Speaking of Johnny Depp, I know what would be improved if it was made into a musical. Edward mm. Scissorhands. Yes. That's right? a good movie. Yeah. yeah. That would be so good. But he kind of, he's got Sweeney Todd. And then, have you ever seen that? And The Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm. No, but have you seen the new Sweeney Todd with Johnny Depp in? Yes. I've yeah. seen all the Tim, anything Tim Burton. Of course you have, have. yeah. <laughs> well, I think Edward Scissorhands, yeah. That would be fantastic. Ed Scissorhands, the musical. Mm. Beetlejuice, too. Battle guys. I mean, they do. His movies do lend well to both music and not yeah. music. Yeah. Neil Gaiman's would too, like Stardust. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been fantastic as a musical. The guy that was in that plays Daredevil in um, that Netflix Daredevil series. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I obviously didn't recognize him, but yeah. I was overjoyed when I saw Robert De Niro in it and just like Yeah, yeah, yeah. As William Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> just amazing. Because you have that to make a, it. <laughs> that's an instance I found where the movie was better than the book. Mm. Yeah. I can't remember. I don't remember much about the books. I saw long ago that I read it actually. But yeah. Have you read another if we're on the Johnny Depp train? Um, mm. not that this would be a musical, but mm. there's one instant. This is one that stands out to me very clearly of a time where the book and the movie were just as good, and that's what's eating Gilbert Grape. I've never read the book, but the film is spectacular. The book is just as good. Like I I it's one of those books that I pick up every few years and reread mm. because it's mm. just so good. See, it's when people talk about oh Leonardo DiCaprio is an average actor, or they say he's a good actor, but they've never seen Gilbert Grape or Basketball Diaries. Yeah, I mean he is are. that was when he like definitely those two movies are his like standouts for me as when you really saw his his like breadth and depth as an actor. Yeah, yeah. He's, al he's always going to be one of my favorite actors, though, just in terms of sheer talent. Because um... I did not care for The Departed. Did he not? was fine in it. Yeah. I just thought. So my husband and I were watching. Uh, there was an episode of Family Guy once where they were like trapped. I think they were trapped in the attic, and like there was water coming up, and they were just. And Chris decides to make this like. Was it Chris? No, it was Peter. Peter makes this like confession that he didn't like The Godfather, and then he said, 
the movie insists upon itself. And then my husband yeah, and I so are like, what the fuck does that even mean? Insists watch upon the Departed. Itself. <laughs> then we watch The Departed, and at the end, we're like, that's what it means. <laughs> it insists upon itself. <laughs> that is, oh, that is so true about The Departed, actually. Um, I do find Martin Scorsese in general, like his movies, yeah. some of them are fantastic, and they all... I think they're just all too long. Like if The Departed yeah. was half an hour shorter, it would have been amazing. But then when he takes it to that extra like half hour, same with like Gangs of New York and other stuff, it's yeah. like, oh, just cut it. He did a fantastic job also in Gangs of New York. Mm-hmm. But Leonardo he, Cabrio. I think so. He could, um, the Scorsese could make his movie so much more engaging and just, yeah. He like, I guess that he's stuff. really big into character development, but. They release a director's cut. I have a short attention span, man. Just yeah. cut that shit. <laughs> and like, but this is what director's cuts are for, isn't it? It's for the people who are really invested in that product, and then they buy the director's cut. Exactly. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen Departed for years, but I really like Matt Damon and DiCaprio in it. And I guess I was just so wrapped up in it, I kind of didn't notice. And, I mean, Alec Baldwin and Marky Mark, like, yeah. they were all, there's always going to be Marky Mark to me. I'm sorry, Marky Mark. You're always going to be Marky Mark. But they, <laughs> like, everyone did a fantastic job. And it was yeah. a good story. And Jack Nicholson, obviously. And it was a good story. It was just, it insisted upon itself. The best way of it. Like a lot of people on TikTok. <laughs> yes, they do. Boom. <laughs> uh, what is something that you just realized, recently realized that you were embarrassed you didn't realize earlier? <laughs> but honestly, I did that. I'm sure there's something, but I can't no. think of it. Or you're too embarrassed to say it because I don't have an answer. Now you're scared to say yours. No, nothing <laughs> embarrasses me. I don't give a shit about it. Exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I mean, there was one of our earlier episodes where I got Irvin Welsh modeled up, didn't I, with someone else? I can't remember yeah, what it with, was. Um... Train spotting and Chuck Palahunik. Yes. Yeah, or Palanyak or whatever. And then I got the two muddled up, and then, but it's funny because I got it wrong, and that's a pretty dumb thing to do. But that's why the situation was so hilarious, it, you know. So why would I be embarrassed at that? It happens. Yeah, obviously that's a really mild example, you know. It's not like I just. I went suddenly... to a restaurant like we were looking at like desserts, and I love cannoli as a dessert but i also love cannelloni as a main course and i had <laughs> accidentally said can- cannelloni instead of cannoli and the three people i was at the table with laughed harder than they should have i was like <laughs> really like, <it's> like <laughs> isn't that fun and i don't know if it's because i'm usually very uh eloquent and articulate <laughs> that they were just shocked that i would fuck something up <laughs> and maybe some things are just unfucking pronounceable. Some things are. Can you, in that computer game franchise by Nintendo, I have to say it's in a weird way deliberately, but Luigi's brother, what's his name? Mario. Yeah, thank you. Because when I was a kid, everyone in my class picked on me one day because I said Mario. And they're like, no, it's Mario. <laughs> well, it's like, like Tanya and Tanya or Tara and Tara. Like, mm. everyone has their way. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it was just the Welsh accent that made people laugh. That's what they were really people oh, on me about. Because kids are bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> What's invisible but you wish people could see? How big a man's ego really is. That's the wrong answer. The correct answer is farts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a good one, though. <laughs> I don't want people to see. I eat a lot of protein. I don't want people to see parts. That's a good answer. Well, I don't think it is now. You've already shit all over it. So I'm just going to have to take my now smaller ego and go cuddle it and cry <laughs> and eat worms. <laughs> ego is a good one. What would be? What would it be for women? But in your perspective as a woman, because like honestly, I could say it as a man. I know how the ego affects me. <laughs> but like from your perspective as a woman what would you say is a female equivalent of uh, a male ego i don't know women have egos too um but i think for us a lot of it i I, everything i think of that's going through my head is kind of on the i don't know well like the gold diggery tendencies or superficiality or like there's a woman on tiktok whose entire platform is that she's wanting to be a trophy wife and like she's just looking for rich men and rich husbands like i think 
there was a way to show intentions in a given situation with just like maybe it's just like a <laughs> like a like a happy face neutral face sad face like yeah. if you meet someone for the first time and like they're genuinely happy to meet you it's a happy face but if they're yeah. planning on like like if you're in a subway and you see someone with like an angry face over their head you're like well, stay away from that person or yeah. <laughs> like, like maybe it's just yeah intentions if a woman is walking down the street at night and she sees a man walking in the, towards her and he's got like a hmm. scowly face emoticon then she needs to cross the street and find something else I think intention, good intent, bad intent, neutral intent is what we need to show. Intentionometer. Um, because I, actually, I think the intention thing is, is for, uh, in terms of, of women, is probably quite a good one. Because, um, like, if a woman's sitting in a cafe and she smiles at a man just because she saw him looking at her, so she smiled to be polite, carried on reading a book and drinking a coffee, and the bloke thinks, fuck yeah, I'm in there, and would just stare at her the rest of the time she's in the coffee shop waiting for her to look at him again. So if you could see her intent that I'm just smiling at you to be polite, can you leave me alone? Then the yeah. man, and then because the, the man, because again, if she looks up and sees his ego bubble and shows what kind of an ego he has, it's like a personification above his head of what his ego is, then she'll be like, well, fuck that. I'm not going to smile at that bloke because he's a creep. And it would make dating so much easier if you like yeah. lock eyes with somebody in like yeah. the grocery store as you're both reaching for the cantaloupe and then you see like the intent mm. becomes like, you know, the little heart eyes emoji and they're like, oh, we yeah. Can <laughs> yeah, yeah, it starts winking at you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think emojis as intention is yeah. <laughs> our best idea ever. And because I think certainly with, with the male ego, because that affects all men. Like, it, all of us have it to at least some degree. That it is like, if our egos get the best of us, we can start getting very unrealistic about things. And, like, you just need, like, your friends and your partner, whoever's in your life, to tell you now, mate, you need to be taken down a peg. This is Keep why... I, check. Yeah, I think one of the biggest uh, issues that men and women have when we're kind of interacting with the opposite gender is that men carry their banter nature and that kind of thing to communicate with women. And then we do it like we would with some men in a very particular way. And like you see on TikTok a lot that like women commenting about some things that like a guy said or done, but then they don't see that what he's done is just a joke and it's banter. And there's a miscommunication there because of like the delivery and the way it's taken. And then, um, but one of the things that men do is, is we banter and joke around a lot to develop the boundaries around each other to find out what kind of people we're dealing with. But also because you take your mates down a peg so the ego's getting too big to kind of put them back in their place so they don't start becoming a dickhead um you know that's the function psychologically of it but then obviously there's a lot of you know I have to do the caveats because the internet there are a lot of bad men out there there are a lot of uh, people with malevolent intent but most men psychologically speaking this is why it exists and why men's egos are dangerous anyway lesson over <laughs> the end yeah <laughs> last question okay let's make it a good one mm. better be a good one what inanimate object do you wish you could eliminate from existence have you ever seen the movie lars and the real doll no it's uh ryan gosling and mm. <clears throat> he's kind of like socially he's socially very awkward and he buys uh, i don't know how he gets or if he, if he buys or he gets or whatever he gets a real doll mm. and he starts treating her, he names her Bianca, and he starts treating her like she's a real person. And, like, people in the community, like, his sister starts to get really worried for him because he's developing this relationship with this real doll. But at the same time, he's going through therapy, and he's working through all of his traumas and his relationship problems with this real doll. Mm. And, like, he takes her everywhere, and he does things with her, and, like, people in the community trying to support him start acting like she's a real woman. Oh, and then shit. as as he starts to, like, develop more confidence and more self-esteem and let go of some of his traumas uh, Bianca gets sick mm. and so he's like she's she's she may not make it she's really sick and it's his way of like letting her go so he can pursue <laughs> like a real relationship with a real woman oh, wow. and so in order to do that she has to die <laughs> but but people in the community are like no Bianca no <laughs> <laughs> It's a very bizarre oh, movie. Shit. If you can find it, it's worth yeah. watching. It's a good movie. Oh, wow. Um, 
I take it your inanimate object then isn't sex dolls or whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just wipe them all No. I have <laughs> Why, do you really I have like a, jewels? I have a drawer that I already have, like, if anything happens to me, come into my house and clean out this drawer. Like, that's our... <laughs> that, that conversation's been had. Yeah. What an animate object. Hmm. I think you need to do some TikToks about your drawer now and just no. show the whole world what's in it. That's not, that's not what my page is about. There's going to be pictures of feet in there, I bet. It's like you're, um, yeah, like you hate them, but you can't help yourself. <laughs> you look really angry. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I was going to say something else about feet, but I can't remember. No, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I saw this TikTok. This guy, uh, he was behind his girlfriend, and she was, like, up on her phone doing something, and then he, like, put an ice cream cone near her face or a popsicle so she lets it and then he gets back and then he puts the popsicle near her face again and she lets it and then he pulls back and then he puts his toe in front of her face and she licked that and i almost threw my phone across the room she was just as mad as i was about it yeah. and i didn't even have to lick his toe like it was just that's that, hilarious that's a breakup right there yeah. <laughs> what inanimate object needs to go uh, I can't think of any, if I'm honest. Me either. Damn it. Face of black. <laughs> <laughs> like, subscribe. Face of black. <laughs>